Hey everybody, Brock Frady here helping you enjoy your ride. And the reason I'm looking away and looking up is because we have two cameras on us. And this is Mike Derland from Mike's Car Info on YouTube. And I am Brock Frady of How To Car Guy. And right now we're doing a really weird intro. This is a collaboration uh, from Mike and I. And I wanna let Mike tell you what we're gonna be looking at today. It's a 2018 Lexus LC 500, brand new for 2018. And what we're gonna do in this video is this is a true collaboration because I have video of the car, Mike has video of the car, we both have audio and video of the car, and so we are gonna take our portions of the video, we're gonna combine them, mash them together into one amazing, such a cool mash video. Mashup, mash mash up. Up. that's it, that's it, it's and a mash up. This is gonna be a first for both of us, so uh, it is a, it's, this is such a very, very awesome vehicle. So we're excited, we hope you enjoy this video, and uh, enjoy. On the outside, it has standard 20 inch wheels. These are the 21 inch wheel upgrade. Electrochromic outside rear view mirrors with memory. That's a feature that's on many Lexus models. It has active sport exhaust. I love the sound, the growl of that exhaust. Arrowhead LED daytime running lights with ultra compact triple projector LED headlights. <laughs> arrowhead that's neat led front and rear turn signals led cornering lamps where are those cornering lamps oh look at that check that out i was looking for led cornering lamps and on an rx 350 the cornering lamps are like down in there but look it's kind of hidden it's right there you see that there it is so when you turn the wheel or put on your signal, that little light lights up. That is a cool feature. LED tail lights with 3D graphics, flush door handles with illumination when popped out, direct spray windshield wipers, and heated electrochromic auto dimming outside rear view mirrors. All right, let's talk about some of the safety features. It has a direct tire pressure monitoring system and direct tire, the difference between direct tire and just regular tire um, monitoring system is direct tire individually assesses the tire pressure in each tire. So that's called direct tire. Driver and front passenger knee airbags, full length side curtain airbags, front seat side airbag, you can see an icon there that says SRS airbag. That's on the outer portion of each front seat. Side impact door beams, front and rear energy managing crumple zones. Also another very cool standard safety feature is called the Lexus Safety System Plus, and that's pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, all speed dynamic radar cruise control, intelligent high beams, and lane keep assist and lane departure alert with steering assist. One of the things that is critical in that system is a triangle that's located right there on the back side of the windshield, and that is a camera. And that can see when you're going outside of your lane, will warn you if you go outside of your lane, and will actually assist in steering you back into your lane. And that all speed dynamic radar cruise control is absolutely fantastic. Of course, three point seat belts for all seating positions. And this is a two plus two vehicle, which means that it's a coupe with two seats in the back. There's a handle and I'll show you that handle right there. So you can just reach back, grab it like that. And then when you put it up, all you do is kind of touch that, touch it up and then it's gonna move forward. So that's your back seat. And I would get in there and demonstrate the size for you, but I'm not going to. And this one does have the Mark Levinson upgraded sound system. So that's a big subwoofer right there. And the wattage on that sound system is like over 900. That is a big boom in that sound system. And so to put the seat back, all you actually do is lay it back and it goes back for you automatically. So nice. 
vehicle dynamics integrated management, and that is vehicle stability control, traction control, ABS, electronic power steering, variable gear ratio steering, and active rear steering when available or if so equipped. Variable gear ratio steering is really, really cool. It actually stiffens the steering a little at higher speeds and it will loosen the steering at lower speeds. Take a look at the inside of the doors here. And this looks like some sort of composite material. I don't know. Can you see that? That's an interesting look there. And it's also all the way down here. Check out the bolts. Look at that. You see that bolt? It says Lexus all around it. And then on the inside, there's Alcantara there in the middle that goes all the way, the full length of the door, the door handle. And that is designed for you to, to grab there. I guess that could be grabbed, used to pull the door shut and also used during spirited driving, if you will. Sitting in here in the passenger seat, I noticed that there's two handles. So I have a handle here. Now the passenger door is slightly different than the driver's side door. You have this handle that sticks out and you have this open space where you can do the controls. And then there's your handle here to open the door. And you can see the driver's side doesn't have all that. Uh, does it have the open space and the big you know, handle? It does have a little hole there for opening and closing the door. But this has a very prominent and cool looking handle. And you have the handle on the left. So if I didn't have my camera in my hand, I can actually hold both handles and really hang on and while Brock is doing donuts or whatever, whatever he does. The glove compartment is electronic button right up here that opens it up and it's a felt lined glove compartment. It goes in there quite a ways too. I don't know if it's kind of dark in there. But I think you can see a brushed aluminum handle there with a nice uh, line that goes all the way down there. I love the simplicity and the artistry of how that door looks. Passenger seat, the bolstering there, it's, it's almost like a multi-level bolsters. So you have the bolsters on the seat bottom and then one that goes on the sides there, but it's not all the way up. And then it kind of splits off and it goes into another area of bolstering almost for your shoulders that's an interesting seat and it is really actually very comfortable power seats for forward and back moving the seat back forward and back and then lumbar take a look at those vents that's interesting there's vents right there above the glove box and you see this vent that is obviously going to be covered when the door closes but it connects to that which runs up and it defrosts the glass. Here's the glove box. Decent sized, but not much. And then there's a hole here. Can you see that? And there is a lock right there. And the seat bolstering is fantastic. Uh, are you looking at my socks? You're looking at my socks, aren't you? Aren't those fantastic? They're really comfortable too. And then there's a handle here. So you've got a, for spirited driving, I guess, you've got a handle here and a handle here. So my goodness, you can, I guess they're expecting that people will just drive it in a very spirited manner on a regular basis. And I, I like the positioning of this door handle a lot of manufacturers, including Lexus, are kind of integrating the door handles into the, the doors, kind of hiding them, but this is, kind of sticks out. I like that. Then the console is here, and you can see it. The, that touchpad there is bigger than a traditional Lexus touchpad, and I've had a chance to kind of mess around with some of the electronics on it, and it is much more precise, um, the, the movements of that touchpad are a lot more precise than they have been on, on uh, the touch pads that I'm used to. And then this gear shifter, that's gonna take some getting used to for a lot of people. It, it, it actually reminds me of how the gear shifter works in the, like the CT and the, a couple of the hybrids. Um, it, it doesn't really actually move very much at all. 
and then there's brake hold right there. That's what will keep you still and at a stoplight if the brake hold feature is active. And here's your driver's door, three person memory. So that's gonna memorize your seat, your steering wheel and mirrors for up to three people. Window controls, door lock, window lock, and mirror controls. The top left of that mirror control pad is says auto, and they will automatically, the mirrors will automatically fold in when the doors lock and unlock. They'll fold in and out. And then on the right side of that, you can manually fold the mirrors in and out by pressing that button. Driver's seat controls looks like they're the, actually the same as the passenger seat. Well, first impressions, the seat feels wonderful. It's nice and tight around the edges, around the sides. Steering wheel is interesting. You can see it comes down to a point here. There's, that's solid though. It's got this satin graphite look here and then a really nice kind of a fat steering wheel in your hands magnesium paddle shifters and those are big you see that goes all the way down to here and up to here that's kind of a lexus first upshift on the right downshift on the left and your steering wheel controls are here with voice commands bluetooth volume multi-information display all there on the left and then on the right side and this is a lexus first that i know of where your cruise control is not down here. Uh, every Lexus that I've ever seen has a little stalk down here and you press the end and you move it up and down. Well, check this out. This is right here on the steering wheel now. So that's your cruise. On the far left, that is to pop the trunk. To the right of that is heads up display and then there's gas. And this is to control your gauge brightness and your odometer. You can see here, this is how you raise and lower the steering wheel. So it's telescope and tilt. On the end here is your automatic high beams. So when you press that, that activates the feature. Then you press that forward to cut it on and that will make it so that you don't blind people at night. And there's a stalk here on the left side and it says traction control off. You just push that to deactivate traction control. Then you roll it down to activate snow mode and snow mode will uh, start the vehicle in a lower gear ratio in order to reduce the likelihood of wheel slippage in bad weather. And there's another stock here and that's selectable drive modes. And you can see it says uh, normal, custom, comfort, eco. And then at the very top it says sport and sport plus. You can operate that feature while driving at any speed. And that's gonna change something called throttle mapping, variable gear ratio steering, uh, also your climate system. It will actually reduce the fan speed of your climate system whenever it's in eco mode. And uh, you can also customize it. And that really does change the driving behavior of the vehicle. I say we start it up. So as long as you have the key fob on your person, you put your foot on the brake, and you tap the start button to go. Love that. And check out how the whole, um, this, the turn signals and everything moves as a cluster. You can see that. You don't usually see that in a Lexus. Your turn signal stock is here. On the very end, you have uh, DRL off, auto, parking lights, headlights on manually, automatic high beams. And so you can, I recommend keeping that on auto and that will allow the headlights to cut on automatically at night as the sun is going down. And then on the right, you have your windshield wiper stalk. On the left, it says mist, off, auto, low and high. Auto means it has rain sensing wipers. They'll wipe in accordance to the rain pattern and you can adjust the auto sensing here automatically. It's also pretty neat how the mirror works. The mirrors, we've had folding mirrors for a number of years, but this one seems to angle up when it closes to kind of move with the slingshot look of the vehicle itself. And when you hit unlock, you can see it opens and there is the LED light strip that is, it runs along the edge there. And Lexus has been going with a design philosophy of tight, tight angles. You can see there, that just looks really cool. It looks like it's a couple of pieces there that 
compose the mirror. And I, I like also how this is body colored. This is color key to the car. And then you have a chrome strip here and a black strip on top. I'm absolutely in love with that tail light. That is something that looks so futuristic. And when you look at it from eye level, and we'll take a look at that, it looks like an afterburner on a fighter jet. And I'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. The area along the top, you can see it's got the lines there in the top of it. And then this area is like just a straight up chrome piece. And the area here is like a, just kind of like a gray, all, it looks like it all goes all the way down here and all the way across there. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but Lexus, one of the things that Lexus does is they incorporate the letter L and, and also I've noticed that they've been incorporating the letter F in, in the vehicles. And I think that this area here is one of the examples of that. You see the, that and that is a F and that would be for the Fuji Raceway in Japan where Lexus does lots of testing. And uh, it's also the namesake for the F line of vehicles. So you can see where your turn signal is, all right there. Check this out. Of course, LED. I hope you can see that. But what I can see is it, it's like 3D. You can see there's a L there, and then inside, and then inside. And if you're looking at it in person, it looks like it goes on forever. That is so neat. And I love how wide that rear end is. The backup camera is just above the Lexus emblem. There's also a little button right here inside that area. You push that and it pops the trunk. The trunk is pretty small and earlier I tried to put a set of golf clubs in the trunk and it did not work, unfortunately. I guess you could remove, remove a few of the clubs, but uh, it was really, really tight and it didn't fit without taking out a couple of clubs. But hey, get a smaller bag or instead of taking this to the golf course, take it on the parkway or just drive it. There's a handle up here and that's where you can pull that down. <laughs> Gosh, it is crazy that this is a Lexus. I'm just, I'm just beside myself. There's the backup camera. There are sensors. You can see a sensor there and then one right there. And that's the park assist. So that's what's gonna beep when you get too close to something. I know you probably have no interest in hearing it run, but I do, so I'm gonna go crank it up. Let's take a look at the heart of the beast. The hood latch is gonna be just to the right of the top of the Lexus emblem. Under the hood sits a 5-liter dual overhead cam 32-valve V8 
that produces 471 horsepower at 7100 RPM. It does have dual variable valve timing with intelligence. It's 303.2 cubic inches. The compression ratio is 12.3 to 1. And all of that's connected to a 10-speed sport direct shift automatic transmission with paddle shifters and manual mode. Everything is different about this vehicle, even the key fob. This is a completely different key fob than any Lexus key fob I've ever seen. You can see the Lexus logo right there. And that's just nice looking. It's actually smaller uh, than even our regular key fobs now. And uh, it, it has all of the traditional functions that a regular Lexus key fob has. Lock on the top, unlock on the bottom, hold, hold. So that's gonna be the trunk and that's the panic alarm. And then you do have the push icon here. You can push that in and there's a physical key that will come out. And that's the same as Lexus has been for a number of years. In order to change the battery in this, you see there's a little slot right there, right there. You can just put that in, twist it and replace the battery in the key fob when it dies, but that's the key fob. So let's take a look at how to operate. You can press lock once, and that's gonna lock all the doors. You can press unlock once, that will unlock the driver's door, and the mirror just folded out, and the door handle just popped out. We'll take a, look, a closer look at that in just a second. Hit unlock twice, and it unlocks both doors. Now there's the door handle. You can see how the door handle is completely flat, and it's inset, basically, into the door. And so when you have the uh, key fob on you, you can hit the unlock button and it's going to fold the door handle out. There is a nice little Lexus emblem on the top and then you're gonna reach underneath and pull. And that's how you open it. When you're finished using the vehicle, close the door and just push the end of this and it closes and locks at the same time. If you approach the vehicle and you don't want to handle this, you can just leave this in your pocket and you press a little dimple that's here on the front side of the handle and it will unlock and it will hold itself in this position so that you can place your hand under and open the door. The body is a unitized steel body with steel front and rear subframes. Suspension front and rear is multi-link. The steering is vehicle speed sensing coaxial rack and pinion power assisted steering. The turns lock to lock, 2.6. The turning circle is 17.7 feet. And with the active rear steering is 17.4 feet. The brakes are four wheel power assisted disc brakes with ABS, electronic brake force distribution, and brake assist. The front brakes are 15.7 inch ventilated rudders with six piston opposed aluminum calipers with high friction brake pads. The rear brakes here are 14.1 inch ventilated rotors with four piston opposed aluminum calipers, also with high friction brake pads. The standard wheel size is a 20 inch cast aluminum. However, this one has the 21 inch forged aluminum wheels and this is sitting on Bridgestone Potenza 245-40R21 tires up front and 275-35R21 tires in the back. The zero to 60 is 4.4 seconds with an electronically limited top track speed of 168 miles per hour. The fuel economy is 16 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway with 19 miles per gallon combined, and the coefficient of drag is 0.33. The wheelbase is 113 inches. The overall length is 187.4 inches. The overall width with the mirrors folded in is 75.6 inches. The overall height is 53 inches. The front tread width is 64.2 inches. The rear tread width is 64.4 inches. It has a ground clearance of 5.2 inches. Take a look here. All I'm gonna do is cut on the ignition switch. So I'm gonna hit this twice. Watch this. All right, 
Now I'm gonna cut it off and watch the dial. On the left side of the steering wheel, you're gonna have steering wheel audio controls, Bluetooth, uh, phone, voice commands, and then you have a back arrow and that's your pages icon. When you press that button, you can see on the dash, it just gives you some basic instructions. And then there's the coolest feature of all, the sliding dial there, the tachometer. This display here, it's a multi-directional keypad and it has OK in the middle. And so when you operate, when you push that up and down and left and right, it operates on the left. You can see that on the left it says settings and there's information, navigation, audio, radar cruise and lane departure, messages and then settings. And so I'm going up and down now, so I'm going up and there's lane keep assist. And when you press OK, that's how you cut everything on and adjust all the different features of lane keep assist. And then you have PCS, that's pre-collision system, and that's how you adjust the sensitivity of the pre-collision system. Blind spot monitor, RCTA is rear cross traffic alert, and park assist. And there's information, so that's gonna be tire pressure monitor system, all of your fuel economy information, engine oil. And there is a G-force indicator, max G's one, gear position, sway warning, tire pressure. Nav uh, navigation or your compass, audio. So those are all the different settings that are controlled by this multi-directional keypad. On the right side, that's the controls for the radar cruise control. On the left, lane departure alert is below that. And then cruise control is on the face. And then audio controls are gonna be here also. So you have audio controls on the bottom far left, then audio controls on the far right, and that's preset station scan and mode changes your mode, and that's like AM, FM, XM, and everything like that. The touchpad system here is a whole lot different. It's like been improved. Feels a lot different. It's much more um, stiff as far as, and, and it's much more sensitive as, as far as its response. And of course, you know, you have the pinch and everything. So you can you can pinch and then expand. You can swipe and everything too. So watch this, I'm gonna do this action on it and watch the map. Then I'm gonna pinch. So let's zoom in and out. And so this this keypad or this touchpad is, is larger. It's just more responsive. It just feels better, more intuitive. They've really improved that. So when you press menu, it takes you to this menu screen. You see in the background? Now, I'm my finger is off of that the pad right now. I'm do, all I'm going to do right now is place my finger onto the pad and watch what happens with the little pixelated dots behind destination the graphic. Watch. All right, so watch up there and then watch my finger here. Can you see that? How ridiculously cool is that? I don't know why I like that so much. Then I can flick it up. I can move it up, go home. And then when I touch it again, it does the same thing. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I love that. And then it says app catalog. I have a feeling that there are a lot more apps that are coming to Lexus vehicles. I just have a feeling. So destination is how you find the way to get somewhere. You can see go home, recent, and favorite. Radio, AM, FM, XM, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Slacker. Media is Bluetooth, USB, disc, and auxiliary. Phone, and what's grayed out is call history, favorites, contacts, and keyboard, apps, and that's infotainment, information, setup, and climate. And in order to operate the heated and ventilated seats, you go to climate, and then you, it, whenever you see the white letters appear above where it says like front, seat steering, concierge, and option, you can then push up, 
and you can now select those. So I'll press down, go to front, and now that's the climate settings. And you can see on the far left, you have the icons that are over on the very far left, right there. And when you move it over there, that little uh, display box moves open and you've got front, seat and steering, concierge and options. But right now we are in the uh, front. And so this is gonna, it says auto, so that's how to auto set the uh, climate system to auto or manual. And here you can increase or decrease the temperature, but you can also do that with the physical buttons down below the screen. And then I can go over here to the left to seat and steering press down and over on the far left I have the ventilated portion of the seat so what I can do on the pad is now swipe up and that starts the fan you may be able to hear that and then I can swipe down it'll decrease it one level with each small swipe and then I can swipe right and that's heated seat control heated steering wheel, then this is passenger heated seat, passenger ventilated seat, okay? Then I can press the steering wheel one, I can swipe up, and it's actually a two level uh, heated steering wheel. You see that, that is so neat. Swipe up, and the lights in the steering wheel icon get brighter. Swipe down, less bright, off. And then I can swipe left all the way, and there's concierge and then I can go down to the very bottom and this allows you to cut on the concierge and now everyone has control of their own level of comfort and whenever I press the concierge icon at the bottom left all of a sudden the lights on the climate system came on and so now I'll allow me to operate the physical buttons and then options all right pretty neat to note at the bottom left right there where the little dot is i just highlighted it that's the heated windshield wiper function so you can actually warm the area where your windshield wipers are and then info and that's going to be fuel economy information and over here on the left side you can see on the the far left so you have eco traffic incidents weather Vehicle Alert History E-Owner's Manual. I love this. Press down. Lexus has an owner's manual in the vehicle electronically. I love it. So on the left side, that's the home, table of contents, keyword, and then you have videos. The videos take a little while to load, but that is so cool. You know that I'm going to be all about the videos. Table of contents. Man, that is awesome. Quick guide, basic function. So how to operate the remote touch, which is what I'm using right now. So I'm hitting the back arrow now. So you can sit in this car and learn how to use the entire car right there. And the graphics on the nav screen now, they are actually improved. It almost seems like there's a new navigation system um, I don't know it, it has the the regular you know the foundation of the nav system as always as far as the basic way it works but it there's new graphics and it's much more responsive and everything than it was before and then we'll go to setup so theme settings where you can change the color we'll go to blue oh yes much better I would like for there to be a red too. Auto screen change off. That is where the screen will change automatically between different um, features. Like if you're listening to the radio and you change a radio station and then you, it, you want it to go back to the map automatically after you change the radio station, you'll activate auto change screen. Cursor speed, normal, I love that. So that's like the sensitivity of how fast the cursor moves 
And I would imagine if it's on fast, that's kind of like expert mode for when you want, when you get really used to using it. Feedback force is two. I'm gonna bump that up to three. And now what that does is it increases the amount of force that's in the touchpad that I'm using. And I can feel the difference. And it makes it so that it, you're less jumpy on the screen. You're not, you're not jumping around as much on the screen when it's at the maximum sensitivity for that. So they're set up for general Bluetooth audio phone voice vehicle, navigation, inform app suite, traffic, and data services. So we're gonna go to vehicle. And that's gonna be pretty much all the same things as it has been before as far as maintenance and vehicle customization. The front of this vehicle is absolutely stunning. With the three LED projector headlights standing out, making it look unique. Also, the daytime running light right in here. Nice soft glow. And look at that grill. It kind of swoops down, completely open. Allows plenty of air to flow through, but see how it swoops down in here and actually changes the pattern as it goes down. It, uh, it has the radar adaptive cruise control sensors here on the front, hidden away. It also has the parking sensors across the front and on the sides. Here in the back it has a three-dimensional LED tail light that is really, really cool. Really stands out at a distance and up close. Has the parking sensors across the back and the backup camera is in the very center position. Has the dual exhaust tips surrounded with chrome. And the taillight bezels are a textured chrome as well. The entire roof between the glass is a carbon fiber. The lockable fuel door is here on the driver's side. Has a pretty traditional cap, a little tether system there, but it does have a place to hang the cap when you're fueling. The oversized brake rotors are ventilated, but they do allow some extra ventilation for the wheel well here in the back, right here on the side of the vehicle. The engine compartment is very impressive looking, which most Lexus vehicles are. But check out these strut towers supported with all these braces around the outside, as well as a brace that connects to the center portion of the vehicle. It has an insulated firewall, has a big Lexus plastic cover kind of blocking some of the engine, but you can see some of the engine here on the sides, here, as well as over here. It also has a safety feature that I've never seen before. In the event of an accident in which the airbags will deploy, it has these little piston right here and on both hinges for the hood. And from what I understand, it will eject the hood. So it releases the hood completely from the vehicle in an accident. So that way it doesn't, it's just one less part that you have to worry about as far as crumpling up or, you know, causing a problem. The interior of this vehicle is 
just about all black except for the contrast stitching in white. So you can see on the leather trim seats has the contrast stitching there with the Alcantara suede in the center. And the door is all soft to the touch. Around your arm is the Alcantara and then you have soft surfaces all up in here, really soft surfaces. You have the storage pocket there at the bottom. Then you get into the smooth plastics there at the bottom area for durability. There's your seal plate and your threshold with the Lexus badging. Power seats with the power lumbar adjustments. Now these are the type of seats, kind of like a dental chair. You can go all around and get really comfortable. And they hug you quite well with the bolstering is uh, very, very comfortable. and the contours are perfect, for me anyway. It's a very comfortable seat. And you see the floor mat hooks in place in two places. There's your accelerator and brake pedal, all with the aluminum alloy popping through there with the grips extending. You also have the footrest on the very far left side. Has a power tilt and telescoping steering column has a heads up display which you can adjust here and your dimmer switch, your ability to open up the trunk and your lo locking fuel doors all in that area and check out these paddle shifters, this is a good angle to look at them they're all the way from the top to the bottom and they're actually mounted to the wheel and not behind the wheel so as you turn the wheel they'll, they'll maintain that position it also has four stocks, you have stocks up here and down here
This is a big thing going on on Reddit right now. Everybody wants to know what kind of socks you got on. I mean, they're just like Boom. obsessed with your socks for whatever yeah. reason. Right there. Isn't that awesome. sweet? I can see why people get obsessed with them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's probably a Twitter page and, a, and, a, and an Instagram account dedicated to my socks. Brock Socks rocks. <laughs>